What is your never meet your heroes story? Traveled three hours with a few friends of mine to watch an independent author, 36 meters, on his speaking tour when we were 14. He just released a book about his sex addiction, but his other books were just about his life and I loved him. When he found out we'd traveled so far, he started asking about how we got there and I told him my sister, 34, drove us. I tried to tell him that he inspired me and I was so happy to meet him, all he did was ask if my sister was hot told him she was in a long-term committed relationship and all he could say was I don't mind. Discovered dude was just gross and never bought another of his books. DC Parlov. I realized that celebrities were normal ass people when I saw Steve Buscemi drop salad in his lap in a Burger King near Bob Hope Airport. Similar, but it was Olivia Wilde at Salt Lake Airport and she was struggling to open the container her salad came in. TBH, it killed any fight scene she does for me, like in Tron. She beat up a bar full of people but can't open her salad. Jason Sudeikis was awesome to chat with though. Not me, but my 4 yo daughter. She loves mailmen, she insists that she really wants to be one when she grows up, she's even planning to be a mailman for Halloween. She stops every mailman she sees to shower them with questions, and most have been kind and patient with this weird kid stopping them to ask questions. Until two days ago, when one told her to go away. She's been deflated for the whole two days. This is the saddest one. Tried to talk to Bill Nye at the USA Science and Engineering Festival when I was in middle school and he was a total asshole to both me and his two assistants. Rolled his eyes at me, was very snarky when I asked for an autograph and tried to tell him that he was the reason I had decided to apply to a science magnet high school. I was totally shocked and it was all I could do to hold in my tears until I turned away. Edit, it was the USA Science and Engineering Festival. Not the National Book Festival, though both are awesome. I was told that as a kid I met Ryan Reynolds on the street once with my parents and he tried talking to me and I told him to go away he's now one of my favorite actors. Year is never meet your hero. Oh, this one is fun. I went to a Blondie concert a few years ago and was allowed to go backstage with my friend who was with a talent marketing agency. Debbie Harry was there talking to some people from the band, and we didn't want to disturb her. So my friend asks one of the guys in the band if he could be in a picture with him instead. I had a pretty nice camera with me. This was nearly a couple of decades ago, so it was a camera with a roll of film inside. The guy in the band was fine with it, so I took the picture with my friend and the band member in the foreground, and Debbie in the background. As soon as I took the picture, Debbie ducking exploded on me. I explained the situation but she just freaked out and told me she'd call the cops if I didn't give her the film roll and my camera right away and did I want to go to jail? I asked what she thought the cops would send me to jail for. She just pushed the decibels up one level and just repeated give it to me. Give me the ducking film roll. Over and over. At this point, I'm thinking yes this used to be Debbie Harry, but right now she's just some crazy person, and I do have the option of just not interacting with crazy persons, so I just take a couple of steps to walk away. Right away she screams like she's just been stabbed or something. Just this loud, high pitch continuous scream these two enormous guys appear and she tells them to take my camera the same way you'd imagine a queen saying off with his head the two heavy guys are like give us the camera or there's gonna be trouble so i pull out my phone and say right i'm calling the cops something must have worked in the way i said this because a person i assume was debbie's manager then says okay here's what we're gonna do we're gonna buy the film roll from you how much do you want for it i say i don't know I've got a few nice pictures on there. Maybe a hundred pounds for the trouble? Without flinching, he pulls out his wallet and, I don't know, maybe he misheard me or he's just not good with numbers, but he takes a whole wad of 50 banknotes and counts 10 50 notes out loud which he gives me. This is way more than what I asked for, so I'm completely confused by now, and I just open the camera and give him the film. The end. Every time I listen to one of Blondie's songs now, I keep wondering what it was that got her to freak out like that, or why this guy just gave me so much more for the film role. My mate is a huge Batman fan and was dragged along to see Val Kilmer at one of his Q&A tours. Val proceeded to be a huge dick while my mate was trying to ask a question. I keep hearing he's awfully rude towards his fans but now I have a first-hand account to confirm. I've never met anyone that was an idol of mine that I had a bad experience with. However, my best friend growing up had his go so bad he ended what was nearly 20 years of fandom right then and there. 
He worked for one of the big shoe stores and had won a contest to go to the All-Star festivities for the NBA. He met a lot of current and former player and coaches and had a blast. Until he met Michael Jordan. Being a sneakerhead, my friend owned originals or re-releases of every shoe Jordan ever had up until that point. It was something like 30 shoes if you counted the different colorways. Posters, jerseys, trading cards, memorabilia of all types adorned a room at his apartment. He sees Jordan and decides to just kind of hang out until he is done talking and just get a quick meet and greet, no photo, no autograph, just to say hey. Jordan ends his conversation and my friend steps up near him and Jordan basically asks him who the duck he is, what he wants and acts like an asshole. My friend just tells him that he was a big fan and it was great to finally meet him. Jordan basically says, yeah, whatever and walks away. He got home from the trip and started selling off his collection of shoes and all things Jordan. He had heard the stories and assumed they were just overblown or didn't happen. Nope, Jordan is a cock in real life. Went to a large comic book show probably 10 years ago or so with my GF. Generally go with a bunch of comics we wanted to get autographed and meet the creators. Standard stuff. Todd McFarlane is one of the big guests to be there and we managed to get decently close to the front of his line, but before he's actually there. That's okay, we're used to this kind of thing. He's supposed to be there in an hour. So, we start by taking turns, one person waits online while the other takes a couple of comics over to another creator, meets them, gets a sig or three. We generally care about meeting different folks so that's fine. Over an hour goes by, someone comes through the line and said he's not here yet, expect it to be another hour. Okay, so we do some more taking turns getting other sigs. A second hour goes by, and now we're told it'll be a bit longer and they're limiting people to three sigs each. Okay. Another half hour goes by, and now we're told it'll be a bit longer, and they're limiting it to one sig per person. WTF, but okay. Another 30 minutes goes by, so 3 hours from when we got in line, don't even know how long it was for the people at the front, and he finally shows up, 2 hours after he said he would be there and by how they kept cutting down how many books we could each get signed, obviously still planning on staying until he had originally planned to leave, not staying longer to make up for the time he was late. As we're getting up to the front, dude's not even acknowledging people as they walk up to him. They try to say anything, he says nothing, quickly signs and shoes them away. Until we get there. Because one of us is a girl. He stares my GF down in the creepiest way possible while continuing to ignore the rest of us. She doesn't have much to say to him at that point, so just got the sig and moved on. As we're walking away, he continues to stare her down, ignoring people in line after us. On the flip side, Jim Lee was the ducking man. We were in line for him and he was told that his time was up and he had to stop. Everyone was bummed that they waited online for nothing. He gets up and loudly announces to everyone online for him that he was told his time's up, so he's sorry he won't be able to really meet everyone else, do any sketches, or take pictures, but if everyone can each take out two things they want signed, have them open to wherever we want him to sign, he's going to quickly walk down the line and sign two things for each person so they at least get something for waiting in line. And while he did that, he was chatting with each person who said something to him, at least smiling and saying hi to each person who didn't. He knew fans had waited in line a long time and wanted to thank them for doing so. Not so much a meet my hero story, but write an essay praising someone who inspired me, and would then go on to do some bad things, story. Grade 6 I wrote an essay about Jeff Gordon, this was during my professional motorsport phase. He would eventually go on to cheat on his wife. Grade 8 I wrote an essay about Kobe Bryant, this was during my basketball phase. He went on to get charged with rape. In post-secondary, during my inspiration of the differently abled persons phase, I included a profile of Oscar Pistorius in a project on para-athletes. He went on to murder his girlfriend. I've stopped writing essays about public figures who inspire me. I worked at a train park in Scottsdale, Arizona back in high school and was in the front lobby when David Spade came in with his kid. This story is pretty great because he was upset that the cashier or anyone up front wasn't treating him in a um David ducking spade just walked into our establishment kind of way. He even verbatim said don't you know who I am? And just seemed super petty. I just remember standing there internally laughing my ass off. It made me question what I thought about him, getting upset attention grabbing in a kid's train park. Bonus story, same train park I was running the carousel one afternoon and an incognito John Heater took a ride by himself at like 3 p.m. confirmed it was him with the cashier afterwards. Still can't get over that either. Actually, the opposite. 
I met Gordon Ramsay one time, and he was actually extremely kind. Definitely not what TV depicts him as. I feel like he's only really an asshole on Hell's Kitchen because those are professional chefs and he expects nothing but the best from them. Meanwhile on MasterChef he usually tries to offer constructive criticism and on MasterChef Junior he's just a big goof with the kids. I was 15 and at Warp Tour and met one of my favorite band members. He wasn't an asshole or anything, but he wasn't what I thought he would be. I had built him up in my head, but he was just a normal person who was tired and sweaty from the long day. And then I kind of realized that all my heroes are just normal people. I avoid meeting anyone I enjoy the work of. People are people, of course they are assholes. Ironically, the one celebrity I have actually had a decent conversation with, Marilyn Manson, was actually pretty cool. I've heard nothing but good things about Marilyn Manson. He seems like an incredibly intelligent and compassionate individual. An acquaintance of mine met him twice once before he became famous and once after and she said he was the same person both times. Fame has not gone to his head. In college, a friend of mine used to draw comics on the side. Because of this, he always used to get a table whenever there was a comic convention in town they were usually in the back of the hall, but still, he would say we were his assistants and get us in for free. One year, his table was in the far corner, by the door that convention guests would use to enter and leave the main hall. This year, the big guest was Walter Koenig, Chekhov from Star Trek. As he was getting ready to enter the main hall for his Q&A section, he stood by my friend's table, waiting to be announced. We tried to say hello, and my friend told him how much Star Trek meant to him when he was growing up, but Koenig just ignored him. Actually, he pretty much snubbed him looked down his nose at us, etc. Anyway, Koenig does his Q&A and comes back through the door, trying to be inconspicuous. As he passes, my friend stands up and yells hey, look. It's Chekhov. Whereupon the guy was immediately swarmed by every single fanboy in the room. He couldn't move, no matter how hard he tried to fight his way through the crowd. It was a good day. My best friend drives for a luxury taxi line and drove Ed Sheeran to his concert. Ed gets in my friend's car, my friend is greeting him, he doesn't even say hello back. My friend tells him few seconds later, Hello my name is. I am your driver today and I am sorry but I just have to tell you I really enjoy your music and it's really an honor for me to drive you to your concert. Ed, the asshole he was, just looked at him and said yeah whatever and put his earphones on. Yeah you can imagine, my best friend doesn't like him since that moment. Not my story, but my dad was once kicked out of a restaurant because John Travolta wanted to eat there and made them clear the entire place out in the middle of everyone else's meals. A former pastor. He was everyone's favorite and was always the center of attention. Great speaker and seemed all around compassionate for his people. I looked up to him and thought he was an all around decent being. I ended up getting involved in ministry and discovered this guy is more than likely an actual psychopath. The signs are all there, just everyone ignores it. Things ended up getting toxic and I honestly wish I could have seen him as the old pastor. Not the secretly scary manipulative person underneath was told by others it was my own fault for getting hurt by his toxic behavior and I shouldn't put someone on a pedestal. Tried a new church years later and the new pastor admits some days he just doesn't want to come in, and he struggles with his own issues. I respect him for keeping it real. Not a bad story, just awkward. Got to meet Carl Urban at a con, he was friendly and all, but I was so nervous I could barely say a word, English not being my first language also didn't really help. Also had to wait a little bit in line because he just left for a quick bathroom break, so I just sorta of stood there. He actually tried to make a bit of a conversation but I just giggled awkwardly, it's like my brain forgot every English phrase or a word I ever learned. Damn insecurities. I went to the Q&A panel in the afternoon and he was really funny and entertaining, so I think he's a cool guy overall. I was just too awkward for my own good skeptical. I grew up with a poster of Cameron Diaz on my wall. Always thought she was the dopest. Then I met her and she was rude, stuck up, and made me get out of an elevator I was already in so she could ride it up alone. We were going to the same event. She later didn't acknowledge the elevator ride when we were introduced by a mutual friend. Made me think she's always like that. She may be hot but I wouldn't touch it with a 10 foot pole anymore. Not my hero at all, but I thought Andy Dick's cameos were pretty hilarious growing up, old school, road trip etc. I knew he was a mess now, 
but didn't really know how bad until he sat next to me in a bar one night and grabbed my dick after talking for like 3 minutes he was complaining that his head hurt from a concussion, and my gf didn't know who he was so she looked him up. Turns out his head hurt because some dude had knocked him out the week before in Houston for doing the same thing. You think you'd lay off dick grabbing if you were in the news the week before, jeez. Dude's a mess. I used to love science as a kid, and I'd watch a ton of Bill Nye the science guy. He was autographing stuff at the St. Louis Science Center, I think I was about 8 or 10 years old and super ducking excited to see him. My mom bought me a poster with dinosaurs on it that he could sign for me. Waited about 5 minutes in line to see a very bored, pissed off Bill Nye. Told him I really liked his show and that I want to be a paleontologist when I grow up. He literally said yeah whatever kid under his breath, and signed my poster then loudly said next. I wasn't too bothered about it tbh. But I remember my mom being like ha he was kind of an ass, wasn't he? To be fair he didn't just sign the poster, he also left a quick little note that said follow your dreams or some shit. I'll give Bill the benefit of the doubt on this one, I just think he was just bored and tired from signing stuff for little kids for hours straight. I would be too. Thanks for listening to another episode of Reddit X. Subscribe and activate the notification bell so you won't miss any stories. Feel free to share your own stories below in the comments. Have a good day.